One of the techniques that the book talks about in uh, my unit five, their tutorial seven, I believe it is custom reports, is how to create a blank report based on a query. And I think this is a little on a tricky side, so I want to do a re uh, recording just to help you through that process should you choose to create reports using blank reports. I'm still going to be using my pizza orders sample here, so if you want to follow along, open that up. Any reports that might be in there, we're just we're not going to bother with. Those are the ones that were created from the form wizards. By the way, if this gets a little cluttered and it's starting to, you can collapse these using the arrows and then just see the reports, which is what I'm working on now, but I'm also going to be working on queries. <clears throat> so I'm going to bring that up to go along with this. First thing I want to do, what the book recommends when you build reports, is that you build a query to support that report. When you build a query, you put in all the fields from all the tables that you want to display in the report, and then you can build the report using the results of the query instead of trying to bring in data from lots of different tables. So I'm going to build that query. The book likes to use the select wizard. It's a little simpler. Maybe I'm going to go with design view, which is where I go to first. I'm going to use both tables. And I'm going to create a report of customers and orders. And this is very similar to the uh, form report wizards with some forms that I did. So it's a very similar report, but I'm going to build it manually now and customize it a little bit more. So I'm going to need both tables. I'm going to add them both, close. And let's see, what do I need here? I want the customer last name and first name, but I want those concatenated. So I think I'm just going to type it here. I'm going to call this the customer name field. And it's going to have the cust last name concatenated with a comma and a space in quotation marks concatenated with the customer first name. <clears throat> and then I'm going to go to the properties of that real quick and make sure that in the caption I get a space or maybe just call it customer. That might be good enough. We'll leave it at that. So I could put customer name, space, or just customer should be enough to label that. Then in addition to that, I want the date they placed their order, what size pizza, and what the order total was. I'm going to sort that by the customer name. And then by the order date descending. <clears throat> save that. So I'm going to save it as query customer report. So this is my query for the customer report. I could say customer orders report, but that's good enough for now. Maybe close the property sheet so I've got a little more space here. I can bring it back when I need it. Shouldn't need the query, but I can run it to make sure my names look good, looks okay, dates, size, totals, everything looks pretty good. So I can close that query. Now I'm going to create a blank report. And again, this is the technique that the book uses. I'm more a fan of creating a report using the wizard as a starting point, and there's a couple, there'll be a couple of examples of that in future recordings, but in this one I want to focus on creating a blank report using a query because there's a trick there that's important. So I'm going to create a blank report, and initially the field list comes up, and here's all the tables, but notice it doesn't say query, so how do I get to my query? And if I show the tables, that's all there is. <coughs> Excuse me. So how do I get the query in here? The key to this, and it's not a hard trick, but it's one that you have to remember, is if you want to base this report on a query, you have to go back to the property sheet for the entire report and change its data source, its record source. Right now there is no record source. I can drop the list down, and here's my query customer's report. Use that. Then when I go back to the adding existing fields, there's the fields that are in my query. So that's the trick. It's not too complicated. I'm now going to build a very simple report based on that and do a little bit of customization just to show you some of the tricks that I've learned. I want this report to include a grouping by customer name. So I want to see the customer name and then each one of the orders that the customers place on the next customer name and each one of the orders that the customers place. So when I build my report using this field list from scratch, this is going to be part of the group that's different. So I'm not going to add it to my the grouping is different, so I'm not going to add this to my report right away. I'm going to save it for a little bit later. And I'm just going to add the order date by double clicking it, and the size, and the order total. All right, now, some of these fields are a little big. Um, I can scroll down through this here. OK, 
Okay, look for a personal one. Where's the personal pizzas? Child pizzas, that's right, I changed them. So medium is the longest. And so this column is pretty large, really. It doesn't need to be that large. One of the cool things about layout view, and currently I'm still in a tabular layout. I have not removed the layout. I'm going to do that in a second. One of the cool things about this is all I have to do is size either the label or the field, and they both size together, as long as you still have a layout applied to this. Order total, kind of the same thing. It doesn't need to be that wide. There's a little bit of a gap there, but I'll move this over so that it matches the order total. And the order date looks pretty close, so we'll leave that one alone. Now this is all kind of smushed together, so the next thing I want to do is move the order total over so that there's a little bit more room. However, because I'm in a layout, as soon as I try to move it, it just snaps right back into place. This is part of my feeling, is part of the problem of creating a blank report, is everything is initially stuck into a layout. Good news is it's easy to remove the layout. Whenever you click any one of the fields or the labels, the layout button appears up here at the top. If you click it, it selects the entire layout. If you then click any object in that layout, you can remove it from the layout, and that'll remove everything because everything's selected. So now nothing's in a layout anymore. And notice some things have bopped around here a little bit. The order date has gone to the left. That label has changed a little bit. The dates are here left aligned or right align, excuse me. So I think the first thing I'm going to do is left align my dates. I'm going to click on one of those, format it, and left align it. That looks a little bit better. And then the next thing I want to do is move the order total and its field value over. Now be careful, now that we've removed the layout, these are no longer attached. So if I move the label, it doesn't move the data. So I'm going to undo that and select both by shift clicking. Select multiple objects and report layouts just like you do in forms. There is a recording for that back in Unit 4. And now I'm just going to pull this over a little bit, about that far, maybe a little bit more. And I want to spread these things over evenly. That cannot be done using Layout View, so I'm going to switch to Design View I'm using the buttons down here at the bottom. Just like with Form Views, these buttons are available all the time, so you don't have to keep switching back to Design View and then switching to View here. So I'm going to Design View, <clears throat> then I'm going to select everything. Control-A should select everything, and now I want to evenly space these between here and there. So the key is you set the leftmost column, that's my order date, you set the rightmost column as far over as you want it to be, and then using the Arrange tab, Size, and Spacing, we're going to make the horizontal spacing equal, and it should move everything over so we have equal spacing. So the key here is I made my columns the right size. I sized them all first using layout view so they fit nicely. Then removed the layout, moved this column over as far right as I wanted it to go. I couldn't move it further. And there's a couple of examples in the book assignments where your job is to take these and move them all the way over to the right margin. Okay, but I don't want to move it that far because I only have the three fields. Okay, the next thing I want to do is shrink down my report. It's at 8 inches wide. If you want to adjust the report width, you can. In many of your homework assignments, it tells you how wide. It'll say 7.5 or 7 or whatever, but often you'll simply reduce the report size down to approximately the last field in the report. Let's take a quick preview. This is the print preview. That's a little different than report view. In report view, you see everything kind of stacked on top of each other. In print preview, you see a little bit more. It's not too much different, but you get the idea. They're slightly different, and I'm making progress. Right, what I don't see here is the customer names, so I now want to add those as a group total. In reports, you have the ability to do grouping. You have to be in either layout or design view, so I'm going to go to layout view for no particular reason. I'm going to go to design view, and I'm going to open up the group and sort panel opens down here at the bottom and right now there's no grouping because I started with a blank report. If you do grouping in a uh, standard report made from a report wizard, these groups, depending on how you run through the wizard, will already exist. So I'm going to add a group. I want to group this by the customer name. Okay. Leave them sorted the way they are. But one of the things that the book has you do almost every single time is click the More option here for this group, the Customer Name group, and tell it to keep this group together. If you don't do this, it's very possible that the person's name will show up at the top of the group 
and then because it's the bottom of the page, all of their data will go on to the next page. In this case, I have very few people with large numbers of orders, so I really don't need them to split. By saying keep it together, if the entire group doesn't fit on the page, access will automatically move it to the next page, and in most cases, that's what you want to do. Another thing I don't like, and the book kind of agrees with me here, is these alternating row colors. Here's customer Aikman, and then the next customer gets a different color, and then the next customer goes back. It's called alternating row colors. Uh, Access does this by default, does it with the wizards as well. I don't like it. The book doesn't either. To remove them, it's pretty simple. You select the row for the customer, and now we're going to switch to the property sheet. And I'm going to go to Format, and here's my alternate color. I'm going to drop that down and say, I don't want any color. And now they're all single. Same thing for the detail view. You select any one of the rows by clicking to the left of it and remove the background color. Those background, alternating backgrounds are done for both the detail and for each one of the groups. Each group is a different color. Each one of the detail rows is a different color. It kind of gets annoying. So now let's preview our report to see what it looks like. Okay, the next thing I don't like here is first of all some of the spacing. I can fix that relatively simply and I also don't like these borders. So I'm going to go back to design view and the first thing I'm going to do is select everything. Again, a control A selects everything and I'm going to go the border style. Now notice the border style doesn't have anything in it. In most Microsoft products that's your clue that the things that you selected, my labels, my fields, and everything, they have different border styles, so it can't list it here because they have different ones. The labels don't have a border, the fields do, doesn't matter. I can still pick from here and say I want transparent borders for everybody. Click outside, and now we can see that everything is a little easier to read. So now I want to work on some of the spacing a little bit here. Unfortunately, because I removed the layout, the spacing is a little bit trickier to do. So I'm going to pick these three fields. And using my up arrow key, I'm going to move them up a little bit. Oops, that made a mess. So now I'm going to undo. Maybe I should do this in design view. So I'm going to flip to design view because that didn't work very well. And you can see here's my labels, here's my customer name, and here's my details. So there's not much space above, so I'm going to add a little space below my labels here. Not much, just a little. There we go. And then here's the customer name, and here's the order date and order total. And I think just to make them stand out a little bit more, I'm going to move my order date size and order totals to the right, using the right arrow key. I really don't think this label is necessary. We should be able to tell by the name, so we'll take that out. Customer name, this is important, so I think I'll boldface it. That'll make it stand out a little bit more as well. And now, made a few changes. Should probably save this. Haven't saved it yet, so I'm going to save this as RPT customer orders, or we have one, so I'm going to add a two to that. Real world, you wouldn't have two reports with the same name, but they can be very similar. Sometimes you do that. And right, so now it's been saved. Once again, I'm going to switch to preview mode. And my report's already looking better. Uh, maybe this space underneath the name isn't appropriate or the name above the details isn't appropriate. Right. But I'm starting to get a little bit better look here at what I want. <clears throat> so back to design view real quick. Where are those spaces? Here's a space underneath my customer name. I don't want it. Get rid of it. So I just pull this up as far as it'll go. It looks like that's as far as it'll go. Why it won't let me move it? Must be some spacing limitations, or maybe because I had that selected. No. Nope. Maybe this is still part of a layout. Yep. That's why I can't move it. So again, a little bit downside of using those kinds of a, a, a report like this. Every time you add a new section, I added my customer header to the group. It adds it into a layout, and you have to remember to remove it. So now let's see if that looks a little bit better. Actually, I think. What I wanted to do, let's undo that, is I want to move my customer name down. I want the space to be above it, not below it. Let's see how that looks. That's better. Still a little bit of a space here, but not too bad. And that looks pretty good. And we'll probably leave that as the status for this first version of the report. One other thing I want to do is I want to add some sorting. Within each group, then each group, these dates should be sorted. Looks like, nope, they're not sorted at all. 
So I'm going to go back to layout view, design view, really doesn't matter. As long as I can get to the grouping, I'm going to add a sort. I want the detail records to be sorted by order date descending. Newest to oldest. And we can already see it 7, 15, 5, 14, 4, 14, 1, 14, 8, 13. So now they seem to be sorted within the group. So that makes a difference. Okay, so that's the key. Remember the key here. We're talking about how do we create a blank report based on a query. You have to remember to switch to the data to the property sheet then change its record source to the query. Then you can switch back to the field list and start adding fields to your blank report. Hope that helps, plus a few tips there for uh, sorting these. One last thing before I leave, just noted that these aren't lined up very well. Okay, they're aligned on the left. Most numbers you should align them to the right, especially if the field column is fairly small. So one more quick trip back to design view, pick the values, and align them using the format tab to the right should solve the problem. That's better. You know, the dollar signs are floating. That's the currency format. Some people would say take them off of there altogether. I'm not adding any titles to this. Adding the titles is part of the, the book does a nice job of describing that, so I'll leave that for the book to display, but I'm not going to put it in my recording. So it's kind of boring because it doesn't have a title, but that's not the point. Hope that helps.